Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, we're gonna be using AI, specifically convolutional neural network, to read the stock chart and to try to make a forecast of the next day's stock price movement. And we're gonna see how the experiments turn out and what kind of accuracy are we expecting. And the reason for this experiment in this video is because of all these activities on the trading floor, right? Even me personally, I've been on the trading floor before. And one common thing that I saw people do is they read a chart and then they try to make a guess of intraday stock price movement and how things work. So in this video, we're really trying to debunk the mystery whether the day trading by chart reading is helpful or is a bullshit. And here's a credit to my friend, Adam, who actually gave me this question. Originally, we are actually looking at a week return as well as a month return, but he actually said, hey, look, check out daily return, see if there's any signal there, or are we just all trading noises? So that's the proposition for this video. Let's get started. So a little bit about chart reading. Chart reading is essentially the type of strategy that reads a chart, specifically trying to see if there's any patterns inside of the stock chart. Like for example, here we see some sort of bull flag, right? And then here we see some sort of yield bottom, probably gonna bounce back up, that sort of thing. And then there's also wedge pattern, triangles, valleys, there's a potentially a pendant. All these things can be visually detected according to some experienced traders on the trading floor. And they claim that there's intraday trading opportunities based on these signals. So let's try to break this down just a little bit, right? Using some basic mathematical concept. Let's take a look at the stock price as a function of time, t. So let's define stock price as some sort of S sub t whereas t is time, then assuming that this is a continuous time stochastic process, we can essentially take partial derivative, meaning that in this st, if you take a partial derivative, you can get this first term, which is straightforward, right? You know, with respect to time. So that's why we have st dt here, whereas that mu is just that coefficient. Plus the second term here, it's actually quite interesting. It's what we call the Wiener process or also known as a Brownian motion. So the mathematical form of Brownian motion is saying, hey, look, let's take a look at some sort of process. Let's say call this thing W. This W at certain time T, if you subtract this W from some previous time zero, that difference after that subtraction really falls some sort of normal distribution with mean zero standard deviation T minus S, whereas S is some smaller time increment. Really, in other words, what we're trying to say is, look, starting from time zero all the way to time t, what is the difference? The difference is just some sort of random walk, some sort of normal distribution. Most of the observations stay in the middle because it's a bell-shaped curve, right? A little bit of observation on the upper tail, a little bit of observation on the bottom tail. So that's what the math really boggles down. And then if you're gonna write it in simple term, what we're talking about is the stock price of t plus one, really is a stock price today at T plus some sort of noise. So that's the proposition here. Before I even run any code, before I even run any experiments, that's my guess. My guess is if you're going to look at today's stock price, trying to guess tomorrow, you are trading the noise. So let's use today's experiment to see if that proposition is true. First things first, I'm going to install my favorite packages. Y Finance means Yahoo Finance. MPL Finance is another package that I use to create the stock chart plot. First things first is we're going to download data, right? Yahoo.download, boom, done. In this case, I just pick Apple, right? Let's start something quick and easy. And then I also want to give credits to Professor Sho at Chicago Booth. He actually wrote a paper specifically talk about whether their signal using AI to look at stock chart to produce next five day return to guess next month return. And in his paper, he actually claimed that he found some signal there. But in this video, we're gonna shorten the time frame from five days or a month all the way down to a day. And then we're gonna see if there's signal there. So first thing we do is we wanna process the data, right? So what does that mean? That means I want my X and want my Y. X is some sort of pictures. So how we do it is we roll this I, which is the running index, 
to the entire data frame of the Apple stock data that we just downloaded. And then what we were trying to do is we're trying to cut a certain chunk of the data. And let's pick a window of uh, 20 days, right? And then we can create this OHLC picture using MPF package. And then after that, convert into black and white. And then you can append it into your empty list that we initiated before X, right? You do X dot append, it add that picture into the list. And when you add the picture, the picture is a matrix form. So it's some sort of a non-pipe array, right? It's a two-dimensional array. So once you do that, you do the same with your Y, you want to append your Y as well. Here, Y is just the next day return, right? Next day return basically means you pick the day, you take that stock price, subtract the previous day, and take the percentage. So that gives you X, that gives you Y. Now here, I actually implemented this save methodology here in case that the memory blows up, right? That's why I have this chunk of code here to save everything in a pickle file once every 20 steps, something like that. In the end, return X, return Y, boom, you are done, you get your data. And I already run through that code here. You can see that it actually take 27 minutes. Uh, I don't think I run through GPU. Even in the future, if I'm gonna do this again, obviously I'm gonna run through GPU. And as you can see the dimension, it's 10,821 by 256 by 256. That means every 20 day of stock price, of Apple stock, I am processing that into a picture of 256 by 256, and I'm able to create 10,000 pictures. So that's my X, and then what is my Y? My Y is the next day return, right? So all that sounds complicated, let's just plot it, boom. This is what it looks like. So here we have a, some sort of a OHLC chart. It was also known as a bar chart on the trading floor. And then on the title of that plot, we can say up or down, right? Up means the return for next day is positive. Down means it's negative. And as you can see here, uh, maybe if you're a trader or if you're an experienced trader, maybe you saw something here based on the chart. Maybe you have not seen anything. That's okay, right? That's what we're doing here. So in the following experiments, I am going to build a VGG16 convolutional neural network model. And then I'm going to send this image data through that model. And I'm going to try to train the model to learn to produce the tomorrow's up and down, right? Because that's a sign. That's a signal that we want to do, right? If you're going to look at the chart and decide to buy, that means what? That means you look at the chart and you believe the next day the stock price is going up, right? That's why you want to buy, right? So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to simulate that environment and only that environment by holding everything else constant, okay? So that's the data. We are pretty much ready. Let's jump into the code. So the model we're going to be using is called a VGG16 model. This is the model architect. I went ahead and I coded up. So we got a couple of blocks. These are convolutional layers. Make sure you're connected with the max pooling. Boom, done. And then in the end, make sure you flatten it and then connect it with fully connected dense layers. So that's what the model architect looks like. Once you have the model, make sure you define it and then compile it. And then you can train it. And then here, I actually remind myself of the training on GPU, which is a little bit faster than training on CPU. So now let me show you guys the training performance. As you can see, this is not very good, right? It's pretty much what I expected, about 50%. And as you can see here, there isn't really much to be learned, right? The loss from first epoch is 23. Immediately, the second epoch dropped down to 0 0.69. And then pretty much flattens around that performance throughout the rest of the training process. And then in the end, you can see that the final validation set accuracy, it's about 47%, meaning what? Meaning it's a random guess, right? And then if you look at the loss, it's about uh, 0 0.69, which is not that good either, right? If it's a zero and one on average, you're probably gonna start you off with 0 0.5. And then that little bit of extra of 0 0.19 of a difference, it's gonna be the noise. Meaning what? Meaning if you play around with this, tuning parameter, if you go to your model architect and play around with these units in your neural network model, you probably just gonna get 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, and on average it's gonna probably average out to 0 0.5 for your loss, and the value accuracy is gonna fluctuate around 50%. And then in the end, you can do a, a prediction and then check out the prediction against the ground truth to see what the average score is. And it turned out it's 
exactly 50%. Now, here's the thing. I'm actually cheating a little bit. In favor of that strategy, I'm actually using in sample if you watch it carefully, right? This X here, I did not do anything to separate training versus testing set, right? This entire thing is in sample. And even I'm cheating, even if this is in sample, we still couldn't quite get above 50%, uh, which is exactly the performance of a random guessing. So really, that is it, right? Now that we finish this entire experiment, what is the punchline here? The punchline here is not to say that every trader is not doing a good job. Right? That's not really the punchline here. The punchline here is, is there really a daily signal to be extracted only using stock chart? The answer is we don't know. And the reason we say that is kind of like a statistical hypothesis testing, right? The null hypothesis is maybe there isn't anything there. We don't know. The alternative hypothesis is, okay, maybe there's something there. So we run through this test. We did not find sufficient evidence to claim from this data in this particular scenario that there's strong evidence to say their signal. Therefore, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the conclusion here should be whether there's a signal we don't know, right? At least not from this experiment. Now, of course, this is also subject to debate, right? Because I'm not claiming that this is a perfect model. This is just a model that I pulled out, something quick and dirty for us to talk about, right? You can also push back a little bit. You can say, hey, look, you know, this is only 10 epoch. Maybe you haven't trained to a point where the model is able to break that hurdle, break that bottleneck. That's possible, right? You can buy an expensive computer or subscribe to a more expensive GPU and then train this thing to a thousand epoch. That's your provocative. You can certainly do that. Another thing that you can also push back is we we'll say, hey, look, you know, you haven't done any fine tuning of your model. Like, what are these things, right? Why especially does it have to be five blocks, right? There isn't really science there saying five blocks is the best number of blocks, right? And that's true. I didn't say this is the best model, right? This is just an A model that I pull up. You can certainly do fine tuning, play around with different layers, play around with different units inside of each layer, and then trying to fine tune the models, see how high of a performance that you can improve. Certainly all that is possible. And then in addition, I also wanna point out that the data also deserves a little bit more attention, right? Because there's a good amount of assumption going into this data processing strategy. For me, when I create this picture, I'm using a DPI 100, and you can kind of claim that, okay, that's probably not enough of a resolution. Maybe you want a higher resolution, right? I think I end up picking DPI to be 100 because of the memory issue, because this is running in Colab. And even though I have a Colab Pro Plus, uh, going above 100, perhaps 300, 400, the memory start to crash. That's why I end up picking DPI 100, which you can argue is not that high of a resolution. You can also argue that OHLC chart is not the best chart. That's possible. When I was on trading floor, not many people used OHLC, right? People mostly use candlesticks. So you can change that to candlesticks, see if it gives you anything different. And then one last thing I wanna say is the dimension. Here, to process everything down to a relatively clear picture, but hopefully it doesn't take that much of a memory, the size I end up choosing is 256 by 256. It's a standard square size for most common convolutional neural network models. Now, of course, you don't have to agree with that, right? You can say, hey, look, 256 by 256, that's not really how we learn things. And I'm not seeing a whole lot of things from that kind of resolution. That's totally fine. You can run through this experiment, increase the resolution, and then you can repeat the experiment and see what the outcome is. So hopefully that provides a lot of information for you guys in this short video. Hope you guys like it. And hopefully this give you some empirical evidence and understanding of what's like to trade stock chart intraday. With that being said, I'll see you in the next episode.